Our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this night. Give us this night. Our daily rest. Our daily rest. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those. As we forgive those. Who trespass against us. Who trespass against us. And lead us not, dear Lord. And lead us not, dear Lord. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From the evil one. For he will for thy kingdom and power forever and ever. Good night, God. Good night, God. A healing prayer for our sick loved ones. Almighty Lord, I come before your throne today on behalf of all our sick loved ones. Father, they are weak, their body is in pain and distress, Lord. I pray that you have mercy on them and heal them of all these diseases. You are Lord, you are the all-powerful one. The almighty one, there's nothing that is beyond you. So I humbly ask you to touch them with your healing grace and restore them to health. Remind them of your love for them and help them to trust in you, Lord, for their recovery and show them your healing power and make them whole again. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is calling. June 15th. When you approach me in stillness and in trust, you are strengthened the ether above his own of silence around you in order to focus on things that are unseen. Since I am invisible, you must not let your senses dominate your thinking. The curse of this age is overstimulation of the senses, which blocks out awareness of the unseen world. The tangible world still reflects my glory to those who have eyes that see and ears that hear. Spurring time alone with me is the best way to develop seeing eyes and hearing ears. The goal is to be aware of unseen things even as you live out your life in the visible world. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3, Psalm 130 verse 5. <laughs> A little fast tonight, kiddo, huh? <sighs> The Era of Jeroboam II in Israel. Over the next 30 years, the kingdoms of Israel and Judah will continue their spiritual de decline, which is true. Nothing, it seems, can stop their headlong rush into disaster, particularly Israel. With its love affair with the idol Baal and the idol worship in the south, Amaziah. Amaziah reigns well enough, but he is too set. He but he too set up idols on his return from a successful campaign against the Edomites. Under the leadership of Jeroboam II, Israel will experience great military ex success and resultant prosperity. But Jeroboam's reign will see at least three prophets crying out against increased spiritual and moral dec decay. Jonah will be sent by God as a special messenger to the Assyrians in ne 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 Nevada. Hosea will attack the problem of idolatry in Israel and Amos will speak out against the religious formalization of social injustice. It is increasingly clear that God's patience is running out and that captivity is in sight for the people of Israel. 
One event in this period occurs at the site of Elisha's tomb and proves to be quite a humorous experience, at least for those who act who are not actually involved. The event's more serious message probably has something to do with the fact that Elisha's prophecy concerning victory over the Syrians is about to be fulfilled in a dead nation brought back to life. Amaziah, king of Judah. Amaziah and his son succeeded him as king. In the second year of Jehoash, son of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel, Amaziah of Joash, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 29 years. His first name was Jehoadan. He was from Jerusalem. Amaziah's character. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not as as far as David had done. The only thing he followed the example of his father Joash. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices to burning since the earth. After the kingdom was firmly in the grasp, he executed the officials who had murdered his father, the king. Yet he did not put the children of the assassins to death. In accordance to what is written in the Book of the Law of Moses, for the Lord commanded, parents are not to be put to death for their children, but the children be put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. In Israel, surprise in a Elijah's tomb. Now, the Moabite raiders used to enter the country every spring. Once in a while, some Israelites, once while some of the Israelites were buying a, were burying a man, burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders. So they threw the man's body into Elijah's tomb. When the body touched Elijah's tomb, Bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. Suggest, su suggest, uh, success against Syrians. Hazal, king of Abram, oppressed Israel throughout the reign of Je Jehoza. But the Lord was gracious to them and had com compassion and showed concern for them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To this day, he has been willing to destroy them or banish them from his presence. Hazal, king of Abram, died, and Ben-Hadad, his son, succeeded him as king. Then Joash, son of Je jo Joaza, recaptured from Ben-Hadad, son of Hazel, in the, the towns he had taken in battle from his father, Joaza. Three times Joash defeated him, so he recovered the Israelites' town. Amaziah plans for the Edom campaign. Amaziah called the people of Judah together and assigned them according to their families to commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds for all Judah and Benjamin. The, he then mustered those 20 year old or more and found that there were 300,000 men fit for military service, able to handle the spear and shield. Mercenaries sent back. He also hired a hundred thousand fine men from Israel for a hundred pounds of silver. But a man of God came to him and said, Your Majesty, these troops of Israel must not march with you. For the Lord is not with Israel, not with any of the people of Ephraim. Even if you go and fight courageously, in battle, God will overthrow you before the enemy, for God has power to help or to overthrow. Amaziah asked the of God, but what about the hundred talents I paid for these Israelites? The man of God, the Lord 
can give you much more than that. So I'm just going to dismiss the troops who are coming for him from Appham and he sent them home. Those they were furiously Judah and he left for home in a great rage. Edomites destroyed. Amaziah then marshaled his strength and led his army in the Valley of Salt, where he killed 10,000 men of Seir. The army of Judah was also captured, 10,000 men alive, took them to the top of a cliff and threw them down so that they were all dashed to pieces. Mercenaries wreak havoc. While the, meanwhile, the troops of Mosiah had sent back and not allowed to take part in the war with the towns were going to Judah from Samaria to Bethlehem. They killed 3,000 people and carried off great quantities of plunder. Amaziah sets up idols. Oh, God. Then Amaziah returned from slaughter in the Edomites and brought back the gods of the people of Sura. He set them up as his own gods, bowed down to them, and burned sacrifices to them. The anger of the Lord burned against him, and he sent a prophet to him and said, Why do you consult these people's gods, which could not save their own people from your hand? While he was still speaking, the king said to him, Have we appointed you advisor to the king? Stop. Why be struck down? So the prophet stopped, but he said, I know that God has determined to destroy you because you have done this and have not listened to my counsel. Judah beaten by Israel. As Amaziah, king of Judah, consulted his advisors. He sent this child Jehovah, son of Jehovah, the son of Jehu, king of Israel. Come, let us face each other in battle. But Jehovah, king of Israel, replied to Amaziah, king of Judah, this is the Lebanon, it's in Mexico, it's to see you in Lebanon. Give your daughter to my son in marriage. They are no wild beasts of them when came along and trembled with this on their foot. You say to yourself that you have defeated Edom. Now you are arrogant and proud, but stay at home. Why you ask for trouble and cause your own downfall and that of Judah also? And Messiah, however, would not listen. For God had so worked that he might deliver them into the hands of Jehoash because he they saw the gods of Edom. So Jehoash, king of Israel, attacked. He and Uzziah, king of Judah, faced the garden back to match in Judah. Judah was rooted by Israel. Every man fled to his home. Jehoash, king of Judah, captain of Uzziah, king of Judah, son of Jehoash, son of Uzziah, at Bashamash. And Jehoash brought him to Jerusalem. And broke down the wall of Jerusalem from Ephraim Gate to the Corn Gate. And so came out 400 cubits long. He took all the gold and silver and all the ark was found in the temple of God that had been here of Obed and um, together with the palace treasures and the hostages and the return to Samaria. In Israel, Joash dies. As for the other events of the reign of Joash, what he did and his achievements during the, his war against Amaziah, the king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the annuals of the kings of Israel? Joash rested with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Jeroboam, too, begins soul rule, and jo Jeroboam, his son, succeeded him as king. In the 15th year of Amaziah's son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel, became king in Samaria, and he reigned 41 years. Jeroboam's character. He did evil in this. These are what is like unbelievable when God was blessing them so much. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord and did not turn away from the sins 
of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which hey, he had caused Israel to commit. Heavenly Father, Paul, the last name of Jesus, that the devil has no more power over me. Heavenly name is life. Always remember the devil is power and signs and fake wonders. You know, as I read all of this, you know, I get so frustrated. But, you know, you look around and you see in America and in this country right now, they're doing the same thing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You know, we God prospers and everything else. But what did they do? They turned to Satan. The evil was unbelievable. Increase of love. This is my prayer that your love may abound and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless in the day of Christ. We can hear over and over that God loves us, but sometimes it just takes time or personal revelation to really understand the depth of his love. The Bible says that God is love and therefore more we understand our God, the more we understand his love. As you gain insight into God's favor towards you and others, God gives you discernment and guidance to know what is best for your life. Are you struggling with certain life decisions? Are you finding it hard to accept God's best for you? Allow yourself to soak in the depths of Christ's redeeming love. Then understand he wants us to imitate his love. This is how we know what's best when we make decisions out of love for Jesus and love for others. Lord God, there's so much that I do not know or understand of you, but I know that you are love. Increase my knowledge of the depth of your love. Help me discern what is best for my life by imitating the love you have shown me. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. What a day. Spiritual secrets. A spiritual secret is to learn contentment with the things God doesn't explain to us. And that's what I have to learn today. I, whatever happened, I just got to accept it. Your life has unfolded in a different way than you imagine. It's harder and more complicated and more confusion, confusing because due to unexpected challenges, at time you feel frustrated and discontented. You've been seeking specific answers and your heart longs for resolution, much like the psalmist you question, oh Lord, why do you stand so far away? Why do you hide when I'm in trouble? Psalm 10, 1. Take heart. In this world, your understanding is imperfect and distorted. As you grow in your faith, spiritually, maturity, and wisdom will allow you to see yourself, your problems, and others with clarity. Practice contentment in all situations as you develop the habit of trusting me without fully understanding why you are going through these times. Learn this spiritual secret from my apostles, Paul. I have learned how to be content in whatever I have. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. Then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. 1 Corinthians 13, 12. Praise be to God. You know, we all go through things in our life. This thing and that thing. We all get to have disappointments. Sometimes when in the middle of joy we th that we think is happening and then it falls down, we try to accept the fact that it has fa falls down. So I just pray in Jesus' name for everything. Uh, was I had a I had a really heart wrenching disappointment today, but then I went and I finished 
I finished with my porch. I love my porch. It's a sun porch, and it. I like to spend, you know, the summer out there. We all got going to a lot of disappointment. And, you know, the thing is, as I was finishing everything up, it became to look so beautiful, so peaceful, and so calm. Even though things were going wrong when I was doing it, was tripping over things and everything. But now, my porch is all ready for my summer vacation. That's where I have my summer vacation. It's on my porch. Do I go any place? No, I'm planning on going to the beach at least one day this summer. Uh, so we'll see what happens. But the main thing is the main thing, is getting the word of God out. And I pray that you will continue to listen to the Bible reading or maybe even pick up a Bible and read it yourself. It's interesting. King James Version is the most understandable. You know, it doesn't really have these and thou's and everything else. Because when I started reading with these and thou's, I didn't even understand what it meant. But there's... there's Chron uh, uh, what do we call this? Uh, chronological order of the Bible is really good to do because it keeps everything together with content. And uh, Bobby and I both have the large print, you know, because it's easier to read for us at our age. So, you know what I'm going to say? Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart tonight. Let him in. You won't be sorry. God is good all the time. Even in the good times and the bad times. Thank him for everything that you get. And learn to be content where you are and God will help you. May God bless you and keep you and may his light shine upon you. Amen and amen and good night. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we take care of yourselves. Good night and amen.